classes in what's up fishy friends welcome to tim school of fishing classes in session today i am all geeked up because just the other day rosecraft blades dropped a new traditional knife on us and you know that i went out and got it as soon as it dropped so today we are going to finish for now our series on rosecraft blades traditionals i have reviewed nine of them so far today we are going to review the last two so let's get this camera turned around and take a closer look all right so i apologize about uh, the stuff that you see in the background we are running out of room here so you can see the base of my I've got three monitors up here my regular carry knives all kind of random stuff up here the the foot of the ring light my laptop monitor sticky notes anyway I apologize about all that but we're running out of room and I wanted to continue to do this the same way I've been doing it. So right here in front of us, I have every single one of the Rosecraft Blades traditionals that have been released so far. Now, they are not in the order that they were released. They are in the order that I have reviewed them in this series. So let's quickly go over what we've looked at so far. The Okoe River Kayak the Zambezi, the French Broad Jack, the Beaver Creek Barlow, the Riverbend Skinner, the Little Riverbend Skinner, the Lusahatchee Jack, the Holston River Surgeon's Knife, and the Appalachian Jack. Now, today, we are going to look at a knife, two different versions of a knife, that won the Blade Show 2023 imported knife of the year and it was very well deserved all of these knives were designed by andy armstrong that is his designer's mark right there andy armstrong was a knife designer at smoky mountain knife works for a long time and he designed a lot of the rough rider knives he designed a lot of the rough rider reserve knives and he has designed every single knife on this table. So today we are going to take a look at the Clinch River Swayback. This is the first version of the Clinch River Swayback that was released. This is the one that won the 2023 imported knife of the year at Blade Show. The original one has these beautiful bourbon bone covers and what I think is this magnificent giant finger choil that is cut into the blade as well as the bolster. We also see that on the Zambezi as well. I just think that's phenomenal. Um, it makes this knife very functional and also you know adds an aesthetic that I really like so that's the first version just the other day they released the clinch river swayback in smoky gray bone the same as we have on the Zambezi the close length on this is four inches it is seven and a quarter inches overall length we have a Warncliffe blade with D2 steel and a satin finish, a brushed satin finish. And you can see here, as always, they do a great job on that satin finish. We've got a gorgeous forward swedge on that blade and a nice, big, generous nail nick. On the tang, it says Rosecraft blades with the rose wrapped through it. On the other side of the tank, it says D2 Steel, RCT005, which is the model number, GY for gray bone, 
and Andy Armstrong's designer or maker's mark, which is the A with the crossbones through it. We've got a brushed stainless steel bolster with a single thread, stainless steel backspring and stainless steel liners. We have a stainless steel rosebud shield and nickel silver pins and we have a lanyard hole here. The covers are smoky gray bone. Now some guys in the knife community will complain if the die is not exactly the same on both sides. Bone is a natural material. There are different densities and so the die is going to be taken up differently on every single piece of bone. You're not going to have two bone covers that are exactly the same. Personally, I love it. I love the fact that no two bone covers are exactly the same. There is variation between all of them. In my opinion, it makes your knife one of a kind. So. Some guys might hate this little bit of a swirl we've got going on here. I love it. I think it's fantastic. As always, the fit and finish on here is phenomenal. There is no gapping whatsoever between the back spring and the liners or between the liners and the covers. There's no stepping whatsoever. The blade and the spring are perfectly flush in the open position and at the half stop. The snap is outstanding. The walk is buttery smooth. Listen to that. I love how it just jumps to the half stop and all of these Rosecraft blades do that. The acoustics on here are phenomenal. So the walk is buttery smooth and the talk is loud and vocal. The pull on here I would say is about a 5 but of course pull strength is subjective and I tend to prefer stronger, heavier pulls. So what is a five for me might actually be a seven for somebody else. Another thing that we have on these Rosecraft blades, on all of them, there's a stop pin down here in the blade channel. And so you never have to worry about any blade wrap on any of these knives. The edge grind, is fantastic it is wicked sharp perfectly even on both sides there are no areas where they got too light or too heavy on the edge grind exceptionally well done just like all of the Rosecraft blades traditional knives so far we have 10 different designs or patterns and 11 different total traditional knives from Rosecraft Blades. I think that they are all exceptional. I love them. You guys know that I am a huge fan of Rosecraft Blades. I am a huge fan of Andy Armstrong. I think he is the best designer of modern slip joints right now and he is unmatched. I love his design language. I love his choice of materials. I love D2 steel. And you can see from the earlier releases to the more current releases how Andy's designs have evolved and gotten more refined as he has done this. And I think it's exceptional. I'm really looking forward to what he and Rosecraft Blades have in store for us next. Are we going to get a two-bladed design? I don't know. I don't know. I did um, speak to him a little bit in some comments and on the um, on Facebook group and I asked him you know what's coming up and he said I can't tell you but you're gonna like it and I'm sure I will I like that he takes traditional patterns and puts his own twist to them and 
his own design aesthetic. I think it's awesome. Another thing that I like that Andy does is he names a lot of these traditional knives after waterways in Tennessee, which is where Rosecraft Blades is located and where he's from. For example, the Ocoee River, uh, Beaver Creek, the Lusahatchee, the Holston River, and of course the Clinch River. I think that's awesome, paying homage to his home state. I know a lot of guys that watch my channel are into modern knives strictly, or they are into traditional patterns strictly, or even vintage knives. I encourage you, if you don't have any Rosecraft Blades traditional knives, get one. Get one of these before it's gone. This thing won Knife of the Year for a reason. It is an outstanding knife, and the ergonomics are just ridiculously good. I mean, this thing will get work done, just like a modern locking knife will get work done. And the D2 steel on there is perfectly capable. I cannot recommend them highly enough. I think it is the best value for your money on the market today, hands down. There we go, boys and girls. We are all caught up. We have done every single rose play. Yeah, we have done every single Rosecraft blade traditional knife. And we are going to continue to do that as they release more traditional knives. So let me know what you think of the Clinch River Swayback. Let me know if you have any Rosecraft blade traditionals or which ones you like the best or which ones you want to have. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. I really enjoy talking to you guys in the comments. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click on my face right over there. That's it for this episode of Tim's School of Fish, boys and girls. Class dismissed.